Hey traders, welcome back to Zen and the Art of Trading. My name is Matt, and today I'm going to be creating another PineScript tutorial lesson. And this video is going to be covering how to use inbuilt indicators. For this lesson, I'm going to be covering the RSI indicator, but in future lessons, we'll go over other indicators and how to combine the indicators with price action in order to generate trading signals. So let's get started. Let's open up the PineScript editor. Here we have a blank script. I'm going to call mine lesson four and I'm going to set the overlay to true so that this draws straight to my chart. I'll save this as lesson four. And then click add to chart and it'll just plot the closing price for now. So the first thing that we're going to do is get some user input. Now these inputs are going to allow us to customize the RSI indicator, the, the inbuilt RSI that we're going to be using in this script. So the first thing we're going to get from the user is what source, what price source they want the RSI to be calculated with. So we're going to say RSI source is set to input. And the title of this input is going to be RSI source. The type is going to be set to input dot source. And the default value is going to be candle closes. We want this RSI to be calculated using candle close. The next variable we're going to get from the user is the RSI length. So RSI length is set to input title is RSI length. The type is input dot integer for whole numbers. And the default value is going to be the same as the RSI's default value, which is 14. The next input we're going to be getting is the uh, RSI overbought threshold. So when the RSI exceeds this number, uh, we will consider price action overbought and we'll plot sell signals to the chart. Now, obviously it's not a great idea to trade these sell and buy and sell signals blindly. I'm, I'm just using this as an example. So this one we're going to call RSI overbought level. It's going to be type integer. And the default value is going to be set to 80 in this case. Normally it's 70. The traditional overbought oversold readings for the RSI is 70 and 30. But today we're going to be using 80 and 20. Uh, we want the most extreme overbought and oversold levels we can detect. And this is just an example of how you can tweak these indicators to suit your own preferences. So the next input we're getting is RSI oversold is set to input title RSI oversold level and the type is the same as the others input dot integer and the default value is going to be 20. So if I save this script, we should get no compile errors. Hopefully. Yep. There we go. So now we're ready to get the actual RSI indicator value. So the way that you get an RSI, uh, the way that you get an inbuilt indicator is using the inbuilt PineScript functions. Normally they're named the same as the indicator. So in this case, we're going to say we're getting the RSI value and the RSI value is in this case, it's going to be assigned to the inbuilt function called RSI. Very simple. Uh, now this RSI indicator, this particular script requires two inputs in order to get its calculation in order to calculate its value. The two inputs it requires is the RSI whoops, RSI source and the RSI length. Now, obviously you can hard code these two values to be whatever you want, but by allowing the user to change these values in the settings menu, uh, it really, really adds to the user experience. Um, it makes it a lot easier to adjust things on the fly when you need to. Now we have the RSI value in order to determine whether or not price is overbought or oversold. We need to compare this value to our overbought and oversold thresholds. So in this case, we're going to create a Boolean value. Remember the Boolean value is just a true or false, a one or zero, essentially binary value. And we're going to call it is the RSI overbought. I like to put a question at the start of my Booleans like is, uh, just so that I know that it is a Boolean. Uh, but in this case, we're going to say is the RSI overbought. And this is going to be true if the RSI value is greater than or equal to the RSI overbought threshold. 
So this operator in here is just the same as uh, mathematics, normal mathematics. Uh, this sign here is greater than, and this uh, combining these two is saying, set this RSI overbought value to true only if the current RSI value is higher than or equal to 80. Pretty simple. So the next thing we need to do is determine when the RSI is oversold. So here we'll say, is RSI oversold is assigned to true only if the RSI value is less than or equal to the RSI oversold threshold. And that's it. It's done. These two variables here will tell us when the RSI is greater than 80 or lower than 20. And so the last thing to do is to plot this information to the chart visually. So now we're going to plot these signals to chart. And the way we do that is using what's called the plot shape function. So if we write plot shape, open bracket, the first value that this function requires is a Boolean value. So we're going to plot the shape only if the RSI is overbought. We're going to title this. If you title this to something that you recognize, you can go into the settings menu later and you can change the color of this shape, the size of the shape, etc. So it's always a good idea to title your shapes that you plot to the chart. The next variable that this function takes is the location. Where do we want this shape to be plotted? We want it to be plotted location dot. If you press control space, you'll get all the valid options for locations. Today, we're going to be using above bar. So we want the overbought shapes, the overbought signals to be plotted above the candles on this chart. The next variable that we can put in is the color. So with this, we're going to set the overbought signals to red because typically red means sell, green means buy. So overbought is going to be red. We want to set the transparency to zero. So we don't want any transparency on this shape. Well, not in this lesson, you can just play around with this if you want to see how it, how it looks on your chart. And the next uh, input that this function takes is the style. What style do we want the uh, shape? What, you know, what, what do we want the shape to look like? So if you type style is set to shape and then a full stop and then control space, you get a list of all the valid shapes you can choose from. Um, I'm going to stick with triangle up and triangle down for this lesson just because it suits what we're going for. But you can play around with all of these shapes when you when in your own time and you might find others that you prefer. But today we're going with triangle down for a cell signal. And the next variable that we can put in here is the text that is drawn to the actual chart. So this is different to the title. The title is for the settings menu. The text is for drawing onto the actual chart. So in this case, we're going to call it OB. We want this signal to have the text OB next to it. Now in PineScript, you have to plot at least one thing, either plot a price action variable like the close, the high, the low, etc., or a shape. So we can now get rid of this plot close and the indicator will save and it will add this uh, code to our chart. So on this time frame, there is no overbought signals. So if we go down the 15 minute chart, there we go. We have our first RSI overbought signal being plotted directly to the chart. So that's great. Let's move down and start plotting the oversold levels for buy signals. So this, we're going to use exactly the same function plot shape. And we're going to copy this, basically copy this entire uh, line of code. So we're going to change all of these values to represent oversold levels, but it follows the same format. So the first variable is a Boolean. This is the flag, the trigger to plot the shape. If this is false, it'll just plot nothing. As you can see on all of these other charts, there's no nothing being plotted. That's because this overbought Boolean is false. It's the same for oversold. So if we go RSI, plot the shape only if the RSI is oversold. We'll call the settings menu oversold. So this plot shape will be called oversold in the settings menu. The location is location dot below bar this time because it's a buy signal. We want it under the candle. The color will be color dot green for a buy signal. Transparency is zero again. 
the style is going to be set to style. Oh, sorry. It's going to be set to shape dot triangle up for a buy signal. And the text is going to be set to oversold. Now we hit save. Our chart will update. And there we have our oversold RSI signals. Simple as that. Now, obviously this is just a very rudimentary example of using an indicator. In future lessons, I'll show you how to detect candlestick patterns alongside these RSI values. So for here, for example, you could make a strategy script out of this by detecting when the RSI goes oversold and then detecting a candlestick pattern while this condition is true. So here, for example, we could make the script detect engulfing candles or high, high, high closed candles only when the RSI is oversold. And then you could create a counter trend trading strategy or a mean reversion trading strategy out of this information. So this code is very useful. I know it's very simple right now, but if you practice this, uh, you'll be able to create some very impressive things uh, in the future. So just quickly, you can change this text to whatever you want. So say you wanted this to say sell and oversold signals to say buy. If I hit save, that'll change this text up here to say sell signal and buy signal. And that's all you need to code in order to detect these uh, market conditions. Now, obviously you could change this to anything you wanted. You could use stochastics or you could combine this with other indicators like a EMA or the ATR indicator, anything you really want to. So that's it for this lesson. I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll go over candlestick patterns. So I'll see you there. Have a great trading day. Good luck with your trading. Best of luck with your coding. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye traders.